Welcome to the Urban Survivor channel and in this video I'm going to be taking a quick look at a handful of 18650 headlamps and comparing their unique features, their output modes, their throw distances, and beam patterns, and a few other features. So if you're in the market for a headlamp, this video will show you a few different options and help you decide which one is best for you. Before we dive in, you can support the channel and help me make more comparisons like this one by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you're thinking about purchasing these headlamps, please use the links in the description, which will help me out a bunch. I've also done comparisons on Keychain, AA, AAA, 16340, 18650, and 21700 EDC and thrower flashlights. So if you like this format of video and want to check out some other lights, they're linked to in the description below. This is the Army Tech Wizard C2 Pro, which is the most durable and also capable of the longest run times on its lowest output setting. It charges magnetically via Army Tech's proprietary charging cable, and it also comes with a nice big 3500 milliamp hour flat top Army Tech branded battery. The tail is magnetized as well, which gives you some additional options for hands for use. It's controlled by a bright yellow rubber side switch, and it has 11 different lighting modes, including three strobe modes to choose from. The Wizard C2 Pro has bead surface TIR optics, which create a nice evenly diffused beam pattern, and it comes with a Cree XHP 50.2, which produces a neutral white beam. The headband is made from a harder elastic material and is highly adjustable and comes with a plastic mount which makes it very easy to connect and disconnect from the headband. It's very easy to adjust the angle of the light and there's also a hard rubber loop to secure the light to the headband. The Army Tech Wizard C2 Pro has a max output of 2500 lumens, a max throw distance of 131 meters, and an intensity of, of 4260 candela. It has a very minimal hotspot and a nice wide flood with a decent sized beam angle which helps to make it easy to see a wide up close area. Next up we have the Sofern SP40, which is one of the most budget friendly lights of the bunch. It has the most simple UI and four different output modes, which are controlled by a rubber front switch and the tail is magnetized as well. The SP40 has a covered micro USB port for charging and the kit I got came with a 3000 milliamp hour battery. It has a toughened glass lens, an orange peel reflector and a Cree XPL emitter with a 5500K color temperature, but there are a handful of other different emitter options as well. The headband is made from a softer elastic and has a very minimal design, and the mount is made from rubber, and it's a bit tougher to attach the light to the headband, but it does keep it very secure, and it's relatively easy to adjust the angle. The Sofern SP40 has a max output of 1200 lumens, a max throw distance of 148 meters, and an intensity of 4620 candela. The SP40 has a highly visible hotspot, which makes it good for spotting particular objects, and it has a decent flood and spill, which helps the user to see the surrounding area, but it has less wide of a beam angle compared to the previous light. This is the Zebralite H600C, and it's the lightest headlamp here, and has a really high 90 plus CRI, and it offers the most options for LED customization, and is definitely one to consider if you're looking for a premium headlamp with a simple UI and a durable design. There is a rubber front switch which controls three main modes, and each main mode has a sub mode with three different output options, and it also has a beacon mode with four different modes as well. The tail is not magnetized, and there's no charging port on the light, and you'll need to supply your own battery and charger for this setup. The H600C has a Corning Gorilla Glass lens, an orange peel reflector, and an XHP 50.2 LED, which produces a neutral warm light. The headband is made from an elastic nylon hybrid, so it's harder and flexible at the same time. It also has a rubber mount to hold the light, and adjusting the angle is smooth, but there's a good amount of resistance. The Zebralite HC600C has a 1616 lumen output. It has the warmest color temperature of the lights here, and is very easy on the eyes. It has a large hot spot, but it's not very concentrated, and it has a huge flood, and delivers a very wide beam angle compared to the previous light. Next up we have the Thrunite TH30 V2, and it's one of the least expensive, but also the brightest lights here. So if output is your most sought after feature, this is a good option to consider. It's controlled by a large rubber backlit front switch, and has six different lighting modes, plus an SOS mode for signaling. It does have a USB-C input for charging the included 3100 milliamp hour battery, and the tail is not magnetized. It has a glass lens, orange peel reflector, and a Cree XHP70 cool white LED, but it can also be purchased in neutral white. The headband is a relatively soft elastic style, and it has a rubber mount, and this one has the least amount of swivel resistance. 
The max output is 3,350 lumens, it has a max beam distance of 155 meters, and an intensity of 6,550 candela. The temperature is on the cooler side, and there's a minimal hotspot, and it has a huge flood and a very wide beam angle. This is the Nightcore HC60 V2, and it's a more traditional shaped headlamp. This light has five different main modes and three special modes, which are controlled by a single rubberized backlit side switch, which doubles as a battery status indicator. And it also has a very well protected USB-C port for charging. The HC60 V2 comes with a nice big Nightcore branded 3400 milliamp hour battery, and the tail is not magnetized. It has a smooth aluminum reflector and an Osram P9 LED, and can be picked up in both cool white and neutral white tints. The headband is made from a softer elastic material, and it has a plastic mount with rubber loops to hold the light in place. It has a hard rubber pad on the back, which improves the fit on the back of your head. And there's also a silicone strip inside the headband, which helps to divert sweat to the side of your head and away from your eyes. Here's the HC60 V2 on turbo, and it has a max output of 1200 lumens, and a max throw distance of 120 meters, and an intensity of 4,240 candela. It has a nice hot spot to it, which makes it good for focusing in on objects and a medium sized flood as well. And it's gonna be better for focusing on things compared to the previous light. Finally, we have the LumenTop HL3A, which is an eye-shaped headlamp. And it's the shortest of the headlamps here. And it also has three emitters, which combine to deliver a nice high output. It also has the highest intensity of the lights here and the longest throw distance. The HL3A runs on the highly customizable Andrill UI, which offers smooth and stepped ramping giving the user full control and everything is controlled by a front switch. The tail is magnetized, but there's no charging port in this light, so you'll need your own charger for the setup as well. The HL3A has TIR optics and Cree XPL HI LEDs. It has a softer elastic headband with an abundance of silicone grooves for diverting sweat and a high-vis orange rubber mount, which provides a nice bit of resistance to the swiveling. The LumenTop HL3A has a max output of 2800 lumens, a throw distance of 200 meters, and an intensity of 10,000 candela. The temperature is close to neutral, and it has a very wide and evenly diffused beam pattern. Here's a look at how all of these lights compare side by side on their highest output modes. Keep in mind that generally turbo modes aren't sustained for very long, and typically will drop down to their next highest output mode in a matter of minutes. For the medium mode comparison, I went ahead and picked a mode with a decent balance of output that would make it suitable for walking on a trail in the dark and enough runtime to be usable for several hours. These are the modes that I think people would find themselves using most often and are very well regulated and will maintain a consistent output for the majority of the time they're running. The Army Tech Wizard C2 Pro has a 370 lumen mode with a 5 hour and 15 minute runtime. This is one of the brighter medium modes and it does deliver a nice bright output for a pretty decent length of time. The Sofern SP40 has a 450 lumen mode with a 4 hour and 10 minute runtime. This is the brightest of the medium modes I have selected for this comparison and this mode is going to give you some of the furthest distance visibility. The Zebralite H600C has a 147 lumen mode with a 12 and a half hour runtime. This is the longest running of the low mode selected, but it still provides plenty of light to navigate through the dark comfortably. The Thrunite TH30 V2 has a 350 lumen mode with a 5 hour runtime. It's another relatively bright mid mode, but the runtime is still pretty good considering how high the visibility is. The Nightcore HC60 V2 has a 250 lumen mode and a 6.5 hour runtime. This is one of the lower output but longer running mid modes and you get more of a spot beam and less flood, but still plenty of light to help you see where you're walking. The LumenTop HL3A operates on the Android UI, so you have the flexibility to adjust the output precisely to a level that suits your lighting needs. For this, it's set close to 300 lumens, and you can expect to get around five hours of runtime on this mode. Now we're gonna take a look at each of these lights on their moonlight modes, so you can get an idea of what their lowest output modes look like, along with their max runtimes. The Army Tech Wizard C2 Pro has an ultra low moonlight mode with a 0.15 lumen output and an incredibly long 4800 hour runtime, which is approximately six and a half months. The Sofern SP40 has a five lumen moonlight mode, which has a max runtime of 220 hours, which is just over nine days. The Zebralite H600C also has an incredibly low 0.08 lumen mode, 
with a max runtime of 3,888 hours, which is just under five and a half months. The Thrunite TH30 V2 has a 0.5 lumen mode with a max runtime of 768 hours, which is 32 days. The Nightcore HC60 V2 has a 1 lumen mode with a max runtime of 680 hours, which is a little over 28 days. The Lumentop HL3A has a 0.2 lumen output mode with a 1776 hour runtime which is about 74 days or about two and a half months. Here's a quick look at how these headlamps compare by weight, including a battery and their headband. The Zebralite is the most lightweight at 4.84 ounces, and the Army Tech is the heaviest at 5.92 ounces. Let me know which of these headlamps is your favorite in the comments, and if you have any experience with these lights, you can let us know how you like them down in the comments as well. Thanks for watching, and again, please use the links in the description below to help support the channel. And please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for more comparison videos like this one, and some giveaways coming soon.